How's it going, YouTube? Welcome back to your favorite aviation channel. And today we have the March 2024 update for Chicago O'Hare International Airport's Terminal 5. This update is based at the 7 to 8 p.m. time frame with plenty of action to go through today. So with that being said, let's get right to it. So first, as always, we're going to highlight some of the progress that's been made on the mat. First off, and this is kind of a minor change, but as you might know, gate M40 has a pretty long jetway. And previously, I had some trouble getting it to extend all the way to the aircraft, especially with narrow body planes. So I basically just put together a small Lego extension right here so that the jetway can easily stretch uh, towards the aircraft. Now, moving along, here's where we see the real progress. I'm glad to say that the mat is around 90 to 95 percent done now because I was finally able to add the concrete boundaries between the grass and taxiways, along with uh, finishing the hold short markings on the taxiways. This was a pretty lengthy job spread out across a few days during spring break. Definitely one of the hardest parts of this entire T5 project, um, especially trimming the concrete foils to make sure that they were the right length and width um, to fit onto the mat itself or the board itself. So finishing this up in total definitely took, I think, a minimum of two to three hours, maybe even more than that. A lot of just precise painstaking work. But at the end of it all, I'm really glad with how everything turned out. I don't know what it is just having these details on here now. Um, it just makes the whole mat look so much cleaner. So hope you guys like how it looks now. So moving on to the flights now, we'll start at gate M4 with this Delta Airlines Boeing 717-200 pushing back with service out to Minneapolis-St. Paul as flight 715. Next, we have a Delta Connection Ember 175 that just came in from New York JFK as flight 3814. This aircraft will be remaining overnight before an early morning departure back to JFK uh, tomorrow morning. Next up at gate M10, we have a Delta 757-200 just came in from Atlanta or Citrus Aviations Airport as flight 2879. This aircraft will also remain overnight before operating flight 1701 back to Atlanta tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. So if you recall in last month's update, I mentioned that there is now a gate M9 on the Delta side of Terminal 5. I recently flew out of O'Hare earlier this month, but because I wasn't flying out of T5, um, I never noticed if this gate is actually there. So if anyone's got further details regarding M9, please let me know. Aside from the jetway itself, I haven't added any markings or anything like that because, I mean, I don't have much space to put here, but I'll try to get that done at some point once I get more information. Moving on to gate M14, we have a United Boeing 767-300ER, just came in from London Heathrow as flight 959. Next door at M15 is the Emirates Boeing 777-300ER, uh, getting ready to head back to Dubai as flight 236. Pushing back from M16 is the Royal Jordanian Boeing 787-8, headed back to Amman as flight 264. At M17, we have the British Airways Boeing 787-8 that just came in from London Heathrow as flight 297, and we'll head back to Heathrow in about two to three hours as flight 296. So these days, BA is currently sending us to 787-10 on the afternoon flight, and it's either the 777-200ER or the 300ER on this evening flight. Um, the 788 doesn't normally come to Chicago, but it did make a couple of visits back in late February, so I thought this would be a decent time to put this one in after quite a while of not including the 788. Moving on to M18, we have the EVA Air 777-300ER, uh, just came in from Taipei as Flight 56, and it'll depart back to Taipei around midnight as Flight 55. Speaking of planes that I don't get to showcase much, uh, EVA is another one of those aircraft. Um, I don't normally get to showcase this flight into Chicago very often because of the timing that it arrives and departs. So that's why I was pretty glad to do the 7 to 8 p.m. time frame this month because you're seeing this aircraft after quite some time. Next door, M19, yes, this is indeed a United 777-200ER, and this aircraft just came in from Cancun, Mexico, as flight 1423. So United's been operating one daily round trip from Chicago to Cancun using their high-density domestic configuration 777-200s. Most of them, of course, are non-ERs, but they do have three 200ERs, or three or four 200ERs that were reconfigured with the domestic configuration a couple of years back. Unfortunately, this 777 service will end on the 31st because United's going to revert back to all narrow-body service on the Chicago to Cancun route. But it's really cool to feature this flight here because this is a major throwback to pre-pandemic when the 777-200ERs were like the mainstay on all of United's long-haul routes, except for a couple ones to Europe that were on 767s. 
Moving on to gate M20, we have the Turkish Airlines Boeing 777-300ER getting heavily serviced ahead of its departure back to Istanbul as flight number 6. At M21, we have the Lot Polish Airlines Boeing 787-9 just came in from Warsaw as flight 3. At M23 is the Scandinavian Airlines Airbus A330-300 making service out to Copenhagen at like 10.45 p.m. as flight 944. And finishing off the Star Alliance lineup, pushing back from M25 is the Swiss A330-300 operating flight 9 back to Zurich. Okay, so at M26, this is pretty bizarre, but yes, that is indeed an Alaska Airlines Boeing 737-900ER, and this aircraft arrived from Zihuatanejo, Mexico as flight 1427. So yeah, this is a seasonal Saturday-only service that Alaska recently started, and it runs on either the 737-900ER or the MAX 9. This is the only time that you'll ever see Alaska at Terminal 5, of course, because all of their other flights depart from Terminal 2. But because of Zihuatanejo being a non-pre-cleared international origin, this flight has to arrive into Terminal 5. And then shortly after it gets cleaned and deboarded, the plane gets repositioned to Terminal 2, it remains overnight, and then it departs back to Seattle the following morning. Moving on to gate M27, we have a United 737-700 that's just come in from St. Martin as flight 1707. At M28, we have another Caribbean origin 737-700. This one came in from St. Lucia as flight 540. At M29, we have United 737 MAX 8 that just came in from Belize City, Belize, as flight 1151. At M30, we have a Southwest 737-700 making service out to Denver as flight 1952. Here at M32, we have an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 here from Montego Bay, Jamaica as flight 1417. And next door pushing out of M33 is another American 737-800. This one is getting repositioned back to Terminal 3 after arriving earlier from San Jose del Cabo, Mexico as flight 976. Gate M34 has this Lufthansa Airbus A350-900 from Munich as flight 434. It's now awaiting pushback so it can taxi over to Terminal 1 for its return flight 435. At M35, we have an American Airlines Boeing 737 MAX 8 that's just come in from Cozumel, Mexico as flight 2496. Next at M36 is a United 737-900ER from Punta Cana, Dominican Republic as flight 1863. And then at M37 is an A319 that also came in from Zihuatanejo, Mexico as flight 582. And at M38 is another Mexico arrival, a United Airbus A320 from Mexico City as flight 474. The last aircraft at the terminal, at gate M40, it's an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 that's arrived from Puerto Vallarta, Mexico as flight 2278. All right, now moving on to the taxiways, we'll start with this Southwest 737-800 taxiing to runway 22 left, heading off to Dallas Love Field as flight 1294. Next is a surprisingly rare sight nowadays. It's a United Express Embraer 170 operated by Republic Airways heading out to Indianapolis as flight 3707. Now, I say rare because United's E-170s are quietly and slowly leaving the fleet, and actually a lot of them as of now have been transferred to Envoy Air under American Eagle, and this particular aircraft actually now flies for American Eagle. And I guess that United knew that their 170s were eventually going to be phased out, so that's probably why none of them were ever painted into the new livery. I did see November 642 Romeo Whiskey back in January, um, but I think that was the only United 170 that I saw that entire day. Um, I, I could be wrong, but I'm assuming Republic is offloading all of their 170s, and um, especially United's. I guess they're going to go to Envoy now, but if anybody knows the real details about that, uh, please let me know in the comments. Moving on, uh, behind the 170 is a United Airbus A319 heading out to Memphis, Tennessee as flight 1612. Next is a United Express Ember 175 heading off to Oklahoma City as flight 4741. Next up is an American Airlines Airbus A319 going off to Atlanta as flight 2779. We've got an American Airlines Boeing 737-800 in the One World livery going off to Newark, New Jersey as flight 2606. Next is a United 737-800 heading off to Toronto Pearson in Canada as flight 265. And behind that is an American Airbus A321 going to Phoenix, Arizona as flight 2097. And last but not least is a United Express Bombardier CRJ200 heading off to Peoria, Illinois as flight 5432. 
All right, and with that, we've reached the end of this month's T5 update. I hope you all enjoyed it, and uh, let me know how you like the new improvements. If you have any feedback or suggestions to make, uh, let me know in the comments. I still have some minor work to do, but I mean, you'll see those changes when they come eventually. But anyway, lots of stuff to look forward to, especially next month with ETA Airways launching service from Rome. Technically, they are resuming Alitalia's old service, but it's going to be nice to have them here, and I'm really excited to and I'm really excited to feature them in uh, next month's update uh, videos wise as long as i can remain somewhat consistent you can hopefully expect a new trip report each week for the next month or so um but we're, we're, we'll see about that anyway that's it for today uh, thank you all so much for watching take care and i will see you next time